Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Thursday the 12th of March 2020. And earlier today we published a video covering where one can get antibacterial hand gel. And we close the link in the description box below. Now yesterday we had a, quite a good response to the two videos we produced. Namely, Bank of England cuts rates by half a percent as recession looms. And the UK budget stimulus is it enough? And again, we've provided relevant links below. Now, today has been most exciting in market terms, where not only have we seen equities take a hammering, but precious metals too. So, at the time of producing this video, which is 1900 hours GMT, gold stands at $1,578, down some 3.5% or $56.50. Silver stands at $15.79, down some 5.5% compared with gold's 3.5 or 92 cents. The Dow Jones is down 2,081 points at 21,471, an 8.9% fall. And the S&P 500 is down 192 points at 2,548, a 7% fall. However, that pales into insignificance. The FTSE 100 index closed down a huge 639 points, or almost 11%, at 5,237. But worse still were most of the other European exchanges, which closed down between 12 and 14% in just one day. Brent crude is down $2.65 at $33.14. We filled up our petrol tank today. And WTI crude is down $1.57 at $31.41. However, surprising to many, the dollar index is up almost one full point at 97.47. Wow. A darned good day for anyone who took out puts on the exchanges and the precious metals, for sure. Now, before we take a look at exactly what has happened today, we wish to draw your attention to the video we published last Sunday, which was titled, Economic Thoughts Before Markets Open Tomorrow. Now, we laid out that, admittedly, we did expect gold and silver prices to rise, which they did initially. But we added this as a caution at the conclusion of that video. And we'll quote you verbatim. Now, whilst we are expecting gold to rise this week again, and almost certainly in euro terms, and later in the month in sterling terms, there is an alternative scenario that should not be entirely ignored. It goes like this. The broader market sentiment favours further upside in gold, but the daily technical chart is calling for caution. Friday's spinning top-like candle is signalling buyer exhaustion. This running alongside the bearish divergence of the 14-day relative strength index suggests scope for a notable price pullback. Gold may be forming a double top with a neckline support at $1,563. Acceptance below that level would confirm a breakdown or bearish reversal. Unquote. Well, to some extent, this does appear to have happened and much, much quicker than any of us thought. We had a greater sort of inclination yesterday, which is why we ended yesterday's video with these words as an update, really, to Sunday's video. Quote, We shall have to wait to see the ECB's decision tomorrow and the Fed again the following week. But needless to say, we are still not buying silver as yet and we are stalling on gold in case there is a reversal. That said, though, if the gold and silver price falls back enough, we shall certainly be acquiring some for all of the reasons we have mentioned in recent videos." Unquote. Undoubtedly, events are happening much faster, much further than many people thought that they would. 
So what did actually happen today? Well, we had a double or even triple whammy for the markets, which caused such abrupt falls. Firstly, Christine Lagarde, the new head of the ECB, triggered a bond sell-off today as she launched a package of measures to alleviate the economic chaos currently being experienced. This package included an expansion of QE with 120 billion euros worth of extra bond purchases, plus the launching of a new programme of cheap loans to the banks, thereby making bank lending rates to customers more favourable. Now this was carried out rather than lowering the main deposit rate, which currently stands at minus 0.5%. We did actually express how we would find it difficult, though we did think they would reduce rates slightly, but how it's difficult to do so when you're already in this negative territory. However, this 120 billion euros worth of new bond purchases is on top, not instead of, but on top of the current program of 20 billion euro bond purchases carried out each and every month planned for the rest of 2020. Now, Lagarde was aiming and suggesting that member states should do more on the fiscal side to help their ailing economies, and suggested that not enough was being done, quite similarly in many respects to the Fed chair, basically saying central bankers can only do so much from a monetary perspective, then it was up to governments to do more on the fiscal side of the economic equation, including infrastructure spending. However, the haphazard way she made her announcement caused European stock markets to plunge and Italian borrowing costs soared as markets were underwhelmed by the ECB's easing package and the sell-off intensified during Miss Lagarde's press conference. She tried talking back a little of what was said, but as we can see, the market still were not convinced. Now the second whammy, for the want of a better word, which caused considerable fear in US markets, which ironically was meant to allay those fears, was that the Fed have now undertaken to inject some 1.5 trillion dollars into the market. It's announced today it would offer three blocks of 500 billion dollars into the repo market, which allows banks and financial institutions to exchange government bonds for cash, in a signal that the financial system has been coming under severe strain. In a statement, the Fed referred to, quote, highly unusual disruptions, unquote, in the markets. Now, on top of these two things occurring, the third is the result of Donald Trump's unilateral ban on travel from 26 EU countries. This sparked renewed panic, and investors began looking for safe havens as they prepare for recessions across the whole world. Now, to the surprise of those calling for the demise of the dollar, it did in fact go up. And the pound, sterling, fell 1.8% against the US dollar today, to as low as $1.259. It's lower since October as investors sought safety. The rush to buy dollars also pushed down the euro by 1.5%, back below $1.11. So as we have stated so many times in the past, do not write the dollar off quite yet, ladies and gentlemen. Many other currencies will fail before the dollar does. That doesn't mean the dollar will always be supreme. But in times of controversy, in times of desperation, in times of panic, investors move 
to the dollar, which is why next week's Fed's FOMC meeting will be most interesting indeed. So, we are now in a most strange situation. Equities collapsing around us, and precious metals too. Normal safe havens falling as well. And platinum, because we know we have some supporters of platinum, is also down some $97 today at $770. Now, we have been often asked about platinum, and to be frank, have been reticent to recommend it. As just like silver, it too suffers as industrial demand deteriorates. But do keep your eye on platinum if it's something that may tempt you. It's shortly becoming a very attractive proposition in the medium to long term. But perhaps not quite yet. Anyway, as we suggested earlier in the week as a possibility, not a foregone conclusion by any means, but as a possibility, Silver has in fact fallen below the key support level of $16 and gold below $1,600. And again, as we did warn on numerous occasions, the gold to silver ratio has widened even further and as we speak is currently 100 to 1. Who would have believed this just a few months ago? when the pumpers were telling you and us to expect it to revert all the way back to 18 to 1 or 14 to 1 as the crisis worsens. Mm. Well, it is worsening and we're actually seeing the opposite occur. OK. We will soon be entering very attractive buying territory for precious metals. It's a shame sterling weakens so much against the dollar, otherwise gold in sterling terms would be more attractive than it is currently. But it has held up quite well, relatively speaking. Now we are expecting equities to recover a little tomorrow, but as I've been producing this podcast, I've had a note from controversial Greg announcing some major issues in Italy. And we will cover these on the Richard and Greg podcast, which Greg and I will probably do midnight tonight and then produce or publish early tomorrow. Or failing that, we'll produce it early tomorrow and then publish it around midday. But do watch the headlines for Italy. That's all we'll say at the moment. So although, once again, we are expecting equities to recover a little tomorrow to close off the week, that is in no way guaranteed. And if the Italian situation is as bad as we are getting initial inquiries, then equities will go down even more. Silver we do see going lower. Not necessarily tomorrow, though that's possible, but certainly over the next couple of weeks. So for the moment, we suggest you ignore all these calls for $2,000 gold and $30 silver, at least for the next couple of weeks, despite what gold and silver gurus say on Kitco or anywhere else. These precious metals' time will come. We agree that. But we still suspect there is more downside to occur before then, with gold still being our favourite of the three metals mentioned today, at least in the very short term. And even if gold goes down, we still expect silver and platinum to a degree to go down percentage-wise even more. And if gold goes up, we expect them to rise, but less of a percentage rise. Talking of the Richard and Greg channel, we did actually publish a video there this morning. Uh, and by all means, follow the links that we've placed in the description box below to listen to what's produced there. Every two days or so, there will be a new video. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. And I'm hoping tomorrow to be able to show you a video. And if I do not get it out in time for tomorrow, it will be out on the weekend of the new Illuminati Silver 2020 one ounce round, which is being sent to all of our Silver members who've been with us for 12 months or more free of charge. 
and bronze members will be able to acquire at a 50% cost. But only 100 of these rounds have been produced and therefore we believe will be, certainly hopefully will be, a collectible in years to come. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.